The Postal and Telecommunications Regulatory Authority of Zimbabwe, popularly referred to as POTRAS, was established by the Postal and Telecommunications Act No. 4 of 2000 and started its operations in March 2001. This legislation act brought about a new institutional framework for telecommunications in Zimbabwe. Currently, Potras is moving with the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs theme of leaving no one and no place behind, which theme has also been adopted and adapted into the National Development Strategy 1 or NDS 1. As such, one would find that most projects being undertaken by Potras are in the interest of universal access and use of ICTs. This is in line with the Infrastructure, Utilities and Digital Economy Cluster of NDS-1, which identifies ICTs as a key enabler for economic growth. Due to the life-transforming nature of ICTs, projects being undertaken by Potras are also impacting significantly on the human capital development and innovation and health and well-being clusters under NDS-1. Potras is the poster and Telecommunications Regulatory Authority of Zimbabwe and is mandated to do four basic activities which constitute Potras mandate. The first being regulation. So it's Potras that regulates the postal and telecommunications sector. Second, it's licensing. We license the postal and telecommunications uh, uh, you know, sector. So all the mobile network operators you see are actually licensed by Potras. Then we uh, have a mandate to ensure that there is universal access and usage of postal and telecommunications uh, services uh, through the use of the Universal Service Fund so that no one is left behind. And uh, further to that, we are also mandated to ensure that uh, uh, consumers are protected. So we have uh, uh, consumer protection as part of our mandate. Recently, we have been given an additional mandate, which is the cyber and data protection. And with that, we have already started, we have already created a unit within Potras, uh, which is uh, uh, to look after uh, cyber and data, you know, protection. This is personal data uh, that we are uh, talking about, so that uh, our people's uh, data is not abused. There is a lot of uh, data uh, lying around, and uh, unscrupulous people actually harness the, the data, and at times make a lot of money out of uh, uh, that data, out of the personal uh, data. So that data needs to be protected. This is not something that is being done by us alone. It is um, uh, something that uh, all the countries are doing. Within the region, we have, um, uh, 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 most of the countries already have the data protection units. Um, uh, internationally, Europe and everywhere, there are data protection units to make sure that uh, personal data is protected. In support of the Human Capital Development and Innovation Cluster of NDS-1 and in adherence to the Blueprints motive to attend to the development and capacitation of key national institutions, Potras is undertaking an e-learning program dubbed the Computer Lab Per School Program, where schools are being provided with ICT equipment and internet connectivity in order to bridge the rural-urban digital divide and ensure no one is left behind. As advocated for under NDS-1, most schools that are benefiting under this project are in the rural areas, 
while some unserved schools in urban areas are also benefiting. The project also aims at closing the digital skills divide where pupils without access to ICTs are lagging in the adoption of critical digital skills, which would ensure that pupils take up jobs of the future in this digital economy. Today, I'm just thankful and very grateful. I would like to thank everyone, Otewa Nyatela in this school, everyone who came to be with us today. I would like to thank you so much for the work that you have done to change the face of this school. I would also like to thank you for giving us the computers that our children are going to experience from today to make sure that their learning is made easy. To those that have put a dollar towards this project, I'd like to say God bless you. Those that have not yet put a cent here in this school and in Zimbabwe, I'm inviting you to put money towards education. A total of 6,450 computers have so far been dispersed to 215 schools under the Computer Lab Per School project, where each school receives 30 computers. In addition to this, each beneficiary school received internet connectivity and free internet bandwidth subscription for one year to enable them to kickstart their e-learning initiatives and computer science lessons. For 2022, 126 schools received a total of 30 computers each. A total of 215 schools had benefited from the program by the first half of 2023, surpassing the set annual target of 118 schools by the first half of the year, Potras had also connected 518 schools to the internet, again surpassing its annual target. Potras has a target of equipping 1,500 schools with computers and internet connectivity, as well as affording all 1,500 schools free 12-month internet bandwidth subscription, as the authority promotes universal access and use of ICTs. It gives me great pleasure that I have been invited to give remarks at this important occasion, which marks the last leg in terms of the national e-learning strategy for today, which was just commissioned as we journey towards Vision 2030. The national e-learning strategy is composed of a number of infrastructure initiatives, which also includes the construction refurbishment and renovation of various ICT labs across the country. It also involves the equipping and the connectivity of these ICT labs. And lastly, it also includes the training of students, the learners, the pupils, and also the training of the teachers as we ensure that we develop digital skills, which are so paramount in the context of the fourth industrial revolution. The deployment of ICT equipment and the connectivity that has just been concluded here at uh, Mutende High School through the Universal Services Fund, led by the Director General from Portugal, is something that we are so proud of. You are doing a good job with your team and we are proud of that. The deployment of these gadgets will go a long way to ensure that there is inclusivity as we bridge the raw urban divide. So for today's commissioning of various projects that have been done by my deputy, Honorable Deputy, and by the Director General Comrade, Machengeti has been mainly targeting rural schools. It's been targeting schools in new resettlement areas. Schools owned by churches, schools owned by government, schools owned by other private individuals, as well as focusing mainly on ensuring that we target those marginalized schools by ensuring that with an inclusive 
a policy which will ensure that we leave no one and no place. The schools that benefited from the Computer Per School Lab program during the first half of 2023 cut across all the provinces in Zimbabwe. These include Jekero Primary in Chiredzi, Mashingo, Bere High and Chinyanganya in Mashingo North, Tigili Secondary, Matibelele North, Majini Primary in Badbridge, Chiurai Primary in the Midlands, and Ruwemwe Secondary in Manikaland just to name but a few. For those schools without electricity, um, as I've said, we uh, uh, donate uh, these computers uh, where there is electricity at the moment. And that is the reason for the scoping that we do. But when we uh, realize that there are these schools without electricity, we have uh, been uh, you know, engaging with um, uh, ZESA and they are, I think, at a very advanced stage now that they, will, uh, they are going to be putting in solar, uh, solar um, uh, uh, energy uh, to these schools so that we then go back and, uh, and um, you know, uh, 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 equip uh, their laboratories. But at the moment, we have been leaving those without uh, electricity concentrating on those where there is electricity, while we are waiting for our partner, uh, ZESA, to also do their, their part. Payment uh, for connectivity, it is a big issue for schools. Uh, it's not easy for them to pay for themselves. So during the COVID uh, era, the president then directed that we supply or pay for internet bandwidth uh, to schools so that no one is left behind. So we have been paying for 12 months. But there is no way we can continue to be paying a, 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 a time without uh, end. Uh, we are in the uh, process of uh, also negotiating with service providers. Because when you pay for the 12 months, it means the next payments will be lower. Uh, and we believe that because they will be going down, then uh, the schools would be able to, to afford. And also the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education would also have found some ways of uh, making this project sustainable. Schools themselves, they can actually do quite a lot. They can uh, themselves do um, uh, 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 some projects, income generating projects, uh, which uh, they can then use to pay for, 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 the, for the bandwidth. On our part, we have also been engaging uh, business communities around these schools so that uh, they also chip in because uh, uh, they also benefit out of um, uh, you know, uh, their own you know, schools. The parents also, in some cases, uh, would also come in to, to assist. But it's like uh, the 12 months that we give, um, it's, it's a, a stopgap you know, measure to have them uh, be uh, on the uh, on on on, uh, 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 on 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 online, so that uh, uh, later on uh, the others can also uh, take take over. Further to that, uh, the schools where we go and uh, equip are actually identified by the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education. So they will give us the, the schools. They will identify the schools. And what we'll just do is to go and uh, do, some, do scoping. And then uh, if the school satisfies our, our requirements, then we uh, put in the computers. If we find laboratories which are not uh, up to scratch, we have actually renovated some. 
uh, if the electricity is there, but the laboratory is not in good state. Instead of just leaving, you know, we have renovated some of these laboratories and then um, uh, we will equip the laboratories. Building towards this latest program, Potras has in the past rolled out a number of similar e-learning initiatives. These include the Connect a School, Connect a Community program. In 2013, Potras carried out a project called Connect a School, Connect a Community project, which was commissioned in 2015. This was a nationwide project where 60 schools in the rural provinces benefited. The scope of the project included the procurement and disbursement of furniture to equip computer laboratories, procurement and disbursement of 80 student laptops per school, 10 teacher laptops per school, a server, projectors and projector screens, whiteboards, charging trolleys and solar power plant. Teachers from the beneficiary schools also attended training on digital skills and on how to deliver lessons using the provided e-learning content. In 2015, Potras embarked on a school's connectivity program aimed at providing the following. Internet connectivity, design and deployment of a website for each school, set up email addresses for each school and activate the service, set up a VoIP phone and handset at each school, set up video conferencing. 800 schools benefited under the project after they received internet connectivity and six months bandwidth after which the beneficiary school was supposed to take over the bandwidth subscription. While Potras is rolling out the computer lab per school program, it is cognizant of the transformative power of collaboration. This is why the authority is partnering the International Telecommunications Union, ITU, and the United Nations Children's Educational Fund, UNICEF, in their GIGA project, which too aims at ensuring universal access and use of ICTs by providing connectivity to rural schools. In a show of support to the Computer Lab Per School program and their willingness to partner the authority in bringing ICTs to unsaved schools and communities, top ITU and UNICEF officials attended the launch of the Ndlovo High School Computer Lab in Wulilima District on the sidelines of the Transform Africa Summit. The General Office of the Secretary of, the, of, of Technology We'd like to also say that we are backing the GIGA project and we are supporting the government in any way which we can to ensure that we connect all schools to the internet. Internet connectivity and digital connectivity is a basic human right. In the digital economy, it becomes so important that we build capacity in our school children so that they're able to participate in those value-creating jobs. Not only to build capacity in our children, we need to build capacity in our teachers to teach internet connectivity and how to interrogate and use the internet. The teachers teach the children, the children learn, and then the children teach the parents. The role of a school in a community cannot be underemphasized. The school is not only the place where the community gathers and where the children also come to school. It's also the place where at UNICEF and all other organizations come. This is where immunization takes place. This is where communication takes place. It's also a great start where digitalization and understanding the digital economy takes place. This whole week we were at Victoria Falls looking at transforming Africa. How do we make it a better place in terms of digital connectivity and digitalization? What I witnessed here today is one of those steps of how you make it a better place. We do this for our children. We do this so that we can give them the opportunities which most of us did not have and had to grab on our way learning. So I say to the children of Nlovu High School, this is a unique opportunity for you. U technology in Nandi. U Giga, U Giga, U Nandi. Youngsters who are here, the girls and boys, we just celebrated the Girls Night City Day with the theme, Skills for Life. When I was campaigning, for this, as you know, ITU is the oldest United Nations organization established in 1865. 
and we have five elected officials, the Secretary General, the Deputy, and the three telecommunications bureaus. One is responsible for spectrum management, the other one for standardization. I'm very fortunate and honored to be the one who is responsible for all the development work. So I bridge the last mile and I believe in human-centric work. I believe in demystifying technology. I believe in unmasking technology to see the human face. It is useless to connect to the world if it is not going to positively impact people. And people are those that drive everything that we do. There are many dangers to society today, including climate change, affecting agriculture and food security, natural disasters, and we have to use technology to save lives. Delivering of healthcare, education to have the new generation inspired. Uh, for the schools that we would have um, equipped with computers uh, and also uh, connected to the internet, uh, we have um, a, an evaluation and monitoring team uh, which then uh, monitors the usage uh, of uh, our gadgets to ensure that uh, they are properly used. We realized that uh, in some schools, the gadgets were being taken by teachers to their homes and we have uh, always uh, been discouraging uh, that. In fact, all these gadgets are expected to be locked up in a, in a, uh, a very secure place in the school so that they are not uh, used by teachers. In a few uh, schools, we have already started at least giving one uh, computer or one laptop uh, for, the, for administration so that uh, we ensure that uh, all the equipment that we are giving to schools are actually utilized by uh, the learners uh, themselves and uh, not abused. Considering that ICTs are the future, the Second Republic, under the leadership of His Excellency President Emerson Nagawa, is taking strides in ensuring that all learners are afforded basic internet skills that can empower them to become entrepreneurs and employers in the future. In this regard, the government of Zimbabwe is highly commended for leading the ICT Lab Per School Program Initiative.